previously on the A Question Show. There have been studies where they took religious leaders of different creeds and gave them psychedelics Bro. and asked them. And, and some of them, I, I don't remember exactly the study, but there was, you know, there was a group that had tried them before and a group that had never tried them. Different religions, you know, they had Muslim, Jewish, Christian, faith leaders. And pretty much, I don't want to say all of them, but an overwhelming majority of them agreed that there was, you know, they had a religious experience. Can't afford, that's why I'm front line, hand the sword. I do this all for myself, not the cash and no damn award. I need intelligence to craft my bars. I need the medicine that grows up a vessel from the hands of God. I need inheritance to slash the odds, create a pipeline to the well while you grasp the straws. Oh. Eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions, eight questions. Yeah. Welcome back to the Eight Questions Show. We have our good friend Mike Z here, and I'm very excited about this question. Brian, my friend, take it away. Mike, you know, we, we keep hearing this 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 thought that the reason cannabis is still illegal is because Big Pharma is scared that if it's legal, they're going to be out of business. <laughs> is there any validity to this? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Big Pharma, if you're watching this, don't, don't hurt me. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> we got a mic <laughs> uh -oh. A question show. He's in New York. Just go get him. <laughs> okay. I, I think there is some validity to it and i'll just share an anecdote that i heard which again this is secondhand so i don't know if this is true but i believe the the person who shared this with me which was you know he was involved with a, a company in europe that was doing cannabis research and he was talking about uh some dermatological application like it was i don't know i forget if it was for acne or, or something something that they found that wow cannabis could really make a huge difference here and it was a pharma company that found this out mm. and instead of rejoicing or being excited they were he said from his telling they were terrified wow they were terrified why? because it's a, why i i believe it's because it's it's foreign to them and again most of these people don't they're not used to Cannabis. They don't have a cannabis education. That's always been something on the fringe and outside of what they know and do. Wow. And so I do think that mm. the same way the alcohol industry has seen some of their numbers go down in states that legalize cannabis for adult use, you know, I, I think we will see some some people who choose cannabis or other plant-based alternative treatments to the traditional pharma, you know, chemical treatments or whatnot. And at the same time, I, I, you know, as a, as a pragmatist, as a capitalist, I, I, I fear that it's inevitable that pharma will, I mean, they're already involved in the industry. Let's, let's be really clear that you know, big alcohol, big tobacco, big pharma sure. are all spending money investing in the cannabis industry. They sometimes very publicly, like in the case of some of the big Canadian publicly traded companies that have gotten hundreds of millions of dollars from, you know, the Altrias of the world. Um, but then there's a lot of stuff that's going on where they don't advertise it as much, but they're, they, you know, I'm not sure that they're necessarily like afraid, afraid, like it's not going to put them out of business, but I think they are conscious of the fact that if they don't pay attention to it, if they don't invest in it, if they don't get ahead of things, then it can put them in a vulnerable position business wise. You said that there are things going on that they're public about, mm -hmm. and then there are things going on that they're silent about. Mm -hmm. Is the silence uh, intentional? And if so, why? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, again, there's both highly regulated industries 
And there's the federal implications where, <clears throat> you know, you don't want to dirty up the money, if you will. Um, but I think also that, like, look, I I'll give you this example. Uh, you know, two examples. One, I I've, I've heard anecdotally that there are certain states where a lot of the farmland is getting bought up by by pharma or by to, or you know tobacco is tobacco taking company. land and they they know hey you know instead of growing tobacco we're going to be growing cannabis and hemp here and then exporting it you know once um interstate commerce is possible when the federal policy changes like wildcatting and buy, buy and hold yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly cuz they know that they've got deep pockets they're they're playing the long game and you know i i I think they're they're on the sidelines. They're paying attention. You know, they mm. certainly and and it's not just big pharma, big food. You know, the Pepsi's of the world, the Cokes, the Cokes of the world. They 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 know that. You know, the Doritos, the Hershey's, whatever. They they know that they can do one day when it's legal. You know, what's to prevent Hershey's from doing cannabis infused? You know, it's just going to be another ingredient. That's a good point. So, oh my god, I, I'm not sure if they're really, honestly, scared of cannabis. I think no. they're they're going to be pre they're probably going to be more prepared than anyone else. To be honest, I think. Is, is, <laughs> does anybody here know? Sorry, Mark. I know probably I know probably hit the mic. Uh, <laughs> but does anybody here knows who Doctor Sibby is? So Sibby, yep, yep, yep. You hear about him? Yep. So, from a big farmer standpoint, I think that, um. I think it's a part of, I think it's, I'm going to say bigger than Canada. I think, I think it's more so like the natural way of curing things, right? Yeah. Big Pharma is what? It's, they, they produce these drugs. They have these patents. And these patents are, at least in medicine, are for like 20 years. After 20 years, it's like public domain or whatever the case may be. So they can make a ton of money. They can jack prices up for any, for any reason they have, right? I actually got this from Nipsey Hussle, actually. So he was doing, God rest his soul, he was doing a documentary or developing a documentary about Dr. CB of right. how he passed away. Mm -hmm. So if I told you all, if I told you all, right, if, if, if somebody says, Brian, Mike, I know somebody who cure AIDS naturally, you can be like, man, get the hell out of here. I, nobody has cured AIDS. It's the reason why there's medicine outside, you got to think, so think about how deep this is, right? When it was published in the newspaper that Dr. CB cured AIDS naturally, they went after his throat, sued him. False advertisement, false information. Who's so, they? The newspaper? Big right. Pharma. Oh, Big Pharma. Okay. Took it to the state level. He had facts about the patients that he saw. That he wasn't necessarily, he just called him Dr. CB. He wasn't like an actual, like, doctor. Alien. Oh. Um, but. He said, these are the people who came to me. This is what they, he took detailed notes. They came to me. I told him to take this. They said it was tired of taking the medicine. It wasn't working. He gave them this, this, and this. They had it. They took it for this part of time. They, then they didn't. He proved his lawyer presented it to the, to the court. Won the case. They took it federally. Exact same thing. There's no way he's spreading false information. He's going to get people excited about how he can cure AIDS, blah, 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 blah. He beat that case too. Come he on. won the case on a state level and he won on a federal level. And all he was like, all you got to do is take doom, 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 and just take it regularly in your body because it's natural, knows what to do with it, as opposed to these chemicals going through your body to regulate the disease. Right? If you look at Big Pharma in terms of how they make money. They make money from people being sick. On the mm -hmm. treatment. Yeah. On treatments. So why would they get rid of something, especially something as big as eight? So why ended up happening to this dude? He's still around? He's dead. How did he die? Exactly. AIDS? No. Oh, okay. I forgot how he passed away, but that's why they're doing a, a, a documentary on it. But Nick Cannon is just picking up. He's going to be dropping it soon. But they go through all these cases because when he died, he was perfectly healthy. Wow. Fine. They found him in the house somewhere, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So don't fact, don't fact check me, hey, listeners. But they like, they, he was like, one day he was fine. Next thing you know, he was like 
past like, like gone. big pharma assassins went after <laughs> this man. but but this was back way back when uh, I, I forgot i forgot when he no this is not what i forgot when he passed away but but, but touching on that, that same idea, and Chris, you were, you were saying it too, like there's this idea that this natural movement of, of healing is coming about. Exactly. Mike's saying that they're not that afraid of things. Now. Now, but, what I, but my thought is if you're able to grow your own medicine, even yeah. if they do synthesize it, make it into a pill, they make like the generic version of uh, cannabis, if you can grow it in your backyard, they should still be scared because you could just make it in your backyard. You could, but you can't you... make like heroin in your back. You can't make cocaine in your backyard, but you can grow pot in your backyard. You, you can grow mushrooms in your backyard. You can, but the fear is think about think about how big, and let's just say cannabis has like a big effect on this too, right? Think about how big the disease AIDS is, disease the the disease cancer is. And that automatically is cured because you do X, Y, and Z. Then you got to think about it. The reason why, and this, and you, you can think about it from a street standpoint. If I know that I'm making a ton of money in this area, sure. and somebody else comes in my area, sense. I'm going to, from a street standpoint, I'm going to knock them off because they're missing, they're stopping the grind. They're short stopping my grind now. Right. The right. cash flow is abruptly stopped. Bingo. So right. if, if I have this natural person saying, hey, listen, all you had to do is, you know, take this, you know, smoke this weed or take this oil or whatever, take this, you know, type of cannabis peel or whatever type of natural peel, and it's going to heal you in the inside. The pharmaceutical company is like, that's a billion dollar drug for us. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. What are your thoughts, Mike? What do you think? Oh, well, what if I told you that there is a plant-based solution to the opioid crisis? Oh my and god! Thing on that that point right there. there so, you go. and and I'll tell you when uh, I learned this from. I don't want to misquote this. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up while you're talking. Going, about you're I, I learned this from a guy named Dana Beal, who is like an OG cannabis activist, has been fighting for cannabis and drug reform for literally over 50 years. So shout out to Dana. But he told me about a plant called iboga, and there's a I guess a compound that can be synthesized from it called ibogaine. And there's actually ibogaine clinics in parts of Mexico and I think in, in the Middle East. And, and apparently it's pretty well documented that people with all sorts of addictions from alcoholism to opioids to, you know, uh, other hard drugs that were traditionally the mainstream narrative is that yeah, you're pretty much fucked. Mm. But apparently, you know, he's, he's from what he's told me that he's had friends with personal experience and he's been an a advocate for all this stuff where, you know, you give someone some ibogaine or some iboga and prepared in the right way. They have a trip, which, um. he, which he described as like the worst, like nothing pleasant about it. He was like, this is like the worst hell you could really? go through. Oh but you know, 12 hours a day later, whatever, I, I don't remember the specifics, people come out of it. And then, you know, I don't know what the neuro process is or what changes are impacted as or whatever, but I believe it's well documented. It's not, it's not voodoo. You know what I mean? Wow. And, and so, but again, to the point of, you know, treatments versus cures and medicine versus healing. You know, there's, there's a lot of things beneath the surface. And, and even if you look at food and pharma, you know, who's, wh why is our food less nutritious than it used to be? Because it has all these chemical inputs. And, mm. you know, why does the average American have pesticides in their urine? It, it's funny you say that because Dr. CB, you know, just just to go back, I want to make sure the audience has like a factual thing. He was 82 years old, died in custody in Honduras. Mm. So perfectly fine. He had $37,000 in 30. He was traveling at $37,000 mm. in cash. They said, oh, we're going to get you for money laundering. While he was in custody, he all of a sudden died of pneumonia. So that's why they're trying to do a documentary because, mm. again, if somebody said that they beat a well-known disease, naturally 
and not only beat it on a state level, beat it on a federal level. Yeah. And this person who's not medically trained to be a doctor, but knows all these herbs and things like that. They saying big pharma is and, and very, oh, could be very corrupt. Exactly. Could and very, also, very... Yeah, you know, hundred percent. And also too, he just so people know he died in uh, August 6th of 2016. Just so, just so I'm here on, but not here, but pure on that. So, so Mike, Chris, He's big pharma afraid of marijuana. Mike says, mm, not really. I mean, they're probably going to beat a lot of us to the chase on the medical benefits. But we're still having a little <laughs> bit of a debate. I don't know. Maybe there is an element to this that, you know, us growing our own natural medicines could cut into their bottom line and it could end up getting you <laughs> snubbed. <laughs> <laughs> so we were gonna Don't see you. Cash. Yes. So we will see you guys on the next episode. And this is the one that I think Mike is the most excited about. Where we're gonna talk about what is the future of the cannabis industry. See you cool. next time. On the next episode of the A Question Show. <laughs> um, for example, in LA, where they had a social equity program and the revenue was supposed to go to reinvestment in communities and you know all of this stuff that sounds really great. A lot of the money went to the LAPD.